I buy faulty electronic devices on eBay, attempt to fix them is seldom for a lovely, jubbly, juicy profito. Sometimes it goes my way, most of the time it doesn't. This is Sally Spectacular Spreadsheet where I log those exact profit or losses. As it currently stands, we're at £1,604. However, I do need to make some amendments. The PS5s that I'm selling seem to be selling all right at the moment, better than what they were a month or two ago. This one from episode number 48, I actually sold for a total of 233.95. I thought we were going to bang ourselves 54 pounds of profit, but we actually managed to achieve 88 pounds 69. That is amazing. As for episode 50, which was the last episode in this series, specifically, I banked on 33 pounds profit and I sold for 224.83, giving us a total of 75 pounds 96 pence wow almost over 40 pound extra profit than what i had estimated do you know what i've only just realized i'm now what 152 pounds 75 pence off our target of 2000 pound which may i say might actually be achievable in this episode potentially and this is episode 51 of the series profit or loss season two season one took 104 episodes to hit 1000 pounds total profit and as it currently stands we're at 1847 on episode 51 season two potentially half the episodes double the profit let's hope and pray in this season we also logged our hours worked so i was able to act more accurately represent an hourly profit rate and so far we're at 15 pounds 14 for the 122 hours total that we've worked our total postage is 728 pounds and to look at this i'm about 350 pounds off my estimated total to the actual total of what the items are selling for anyway joey enough of your nonsense. Are you going to be able to close out season two of Profit or Loss today? Let's find out. And with what device? I paid a grand total of £66.47 for this Venom case. No, of course not. There is something inside it. What is it? Let me show you. It is a Nintendo Switch OLED edition uh you can't really see because of the uh the lighting situation that i've currently got going on but um the screen itself is in relatively good condition it comes with one joy con which is kind of random i don't know if it's been opened before or first looks i don't have too much experience with the oleds so this could be a disaster but everything kind of looks okay with it and the screen isn't cracked which is a win on a side note i have also received some headphones which is a nice touch they will, however, be going straight in the bin because other people's ears and whatnot, as well as, oh, how kind of them. They included a cleaning wipe as well, jubbly. However, nothing beats IPA and a good old microfiber cloth. Right, let's see what the actual listing states. I'm not going to bore you with it. It just says it's missing a controller and it's not charging. That's it. That's what it says. So we have a no power OLED. I, I am a little bit concerned because I don't know if you can see at the top straight off the bat, we have almost like a discolored screw here, which can sometimes indicate a little bit of water damage. What about the other screws? Same on the bottom as well. Can you see? They've got that like white tinge to it. I'm just going to chance it. Does it turn on? No, it doesn't. Where's my ammeter? This little doohickey device right here in the top right hand corner of your screen right now is going to tell me, hopefully not straight away, what's wrong with this device, but it will give me some sort of indication as to what's going on. Wait a minute. I haven't checked the charging port and it does look a little bit screw with let me go under the scope quick da -da 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 -da. looking at the port yeah i mean at the ends can you see there's like the copper that's showing shouldn't be like that so this port will most probably need to be changed out regardless of what happens but mm, will it still work perhaps can i see any water damage down there maybe at the top of the port right at the back top of your screen now potentially looks like a little bit of liquid damage there Okay, I still think we're okay to test, to be honest, and see what happens. Let's see, if I go to plug it in, have I got the ammeter the right way? That's the first thing. Probably not, we're showing absolutely nothing. Let me just turn this around because sometimes I can have it the wrong way. Nothing, okay, so I've turned that around both ways. Let me turn this round. Zeros all round, which is quite, if I'm being honest, rare. Usually we should at least see 15 volts or something. But if that port is, and I'm, I'm moving this around, see if I can get a better connection, but nothing seems to be working. So we're not reading 
anything on this device nothing at all okay interesting well it's time to get inside it but before we do that a quick word from today's video sponsor pcb way are you somebody who needs custom parts quick time pcb way makes it ridiculously easy with their instant quote tool just upload your gerber files for the pcb and you are ready to go and this month the september specials are on get purple solder mask for free which is normally a paid upgrade and it's now included at no extra cost for the month of september plus you get massive savings on tpu FDM printing that's the flexible rubbery material that's really really good for stuff like phone cases or soft mechanical parts get 36% off any print over 20 grams and if you go over 64 grams you can get yourself up to 80% off hit the link in the description to give it a try like I said I'm not the most privy to these but uh I'm sure we can work it out right surely so Ben I take this apart and the uh, battery's been disconnected or something silly like that this looks really clean in terms of like nobody's been inside this i don't think this is really really good news it increases the chance of us being able to actually fix it tenfold you know and would you believe it we have a miracle there is no liquid damage on this nintendo switch so what am i looking for here this little polka dot sticker it's pink dots and white background this insinuates that we haven't had any liquid damage reach at least the sticker on the board the battery is still intact so i think this might just be a port issue you know because this is super duper clean i don't think anybody's been inside it and i am ridiculously lucky in that sense easy does it there we go right boards out of the chassis is it just going to be the port it's rare quick check around m92t36 which is this ic just here the power management ic my multimeter is in continuity mode but the multimeter in the top right hand corner of your screen right now let's see what the situation is any shorts around m92 straight away would you look at that so we've got a short direct wait a minute yeah We've got a short into M92T36. So this side of the capacitor here is ground, okay? So this is connected to say, uh, this shielding here. This is a, a direct path to ground. And because I'm probing my leads together, you can see that we have the beep because that is under 50 ohms worth of resistance, specifically one ohm. It shouldn't be, it should be zero. But obviously there's a tiny bit of resistance in my leads themselves. But if I put the black probe on ground and touch here, this should be ground on these caps which it is. One of them's playing up a little bit. But going into the chip on this side, as you can see these little legs here, we shouldn't be getting a beep because it shouldn't be under 50 ohms worth of resistance. I, I, I'm pretty sure it should be over at least 1000 on this area. But you can see we've got 15 here. This one is okay. This one is also okay. So it just seems to be this one cap here. Now, nine times out of 10, it's the chip, not the cap. Not even nine times. I don't think I've ever seen it where it's been a cap and it's always been M92T36. I will just continue to check around and see if we have any other areas of contention. No, we seem to be all okay. So all I theoretically should have to do, I'm gonna change out the port as well. And I think there's a point to that because the port may have been the original issue with this. And as you can see, like I said, you've got the split on the ends and the port doesn't look in great condition. The clasp is broken. So I think we replace the port regardless. So it's, it's going to be a good old port swap, M92T36 chip swap. And hopefully that's going to resolve our issue. Let's start with M92 just because we're here. I can use an M92T36 from this donor board here. This is a switch light. I could use a switch, whatever. These M92T36 chips are all the same from the original all the way up until the OLED. Here we go. Removing this one from the board itself i'm at 440 degrees celsius here with an airflow speed of 50 percent and it should come off very very easily and i'm going to show you that the short disappears as soon as i remove this off before i put the other one on there we go so even though the board is hot i should be able to show you that we no longer have our short so again meter on ground you can see if i probe here you can hear the beep in the background put the multimeter on for you if i probe this cap no short this cap no short and this one no short so our short is gone because we've taken the chip off can you see that and now we don't have a beep here which is where we had a beep before so we angle this top right which is just about here come back in with our hot air exactly the same i'm using the same solder fyi this is just unleaded that is factory on the board nothing wrong with the solder there's just going to be an issue with the actual chip itself. So I'm just going to place that there, keep my left hand very steady, come in with some flux, Joey's best friend. I'm just going to put some in the corner. It doesn't need to be too much. And then what I'm going to do is come back over the chip 
and just rotate that hot air very, very slowly. I'm probably not going to have to touch the chip and you'll see it move into place in a second. There we go. Did you see it? Jump, hop, skip and a jump. That sold us all wet. It's taken to the chip nicely because on this chip specifically, the M92T36, because I've already taken it from another donor, it's going to be nice and tinned on the underside. Problem is when you buy new chips, these chips can, I think they're still around about three pound or so. If you buy them, you have to tin them and sometimes they can be very, very oxidized because they've just been sat around in a factory for a very long time, so on and so forth. Whereas if you take it from a donor, they're really nicely pre-tinned with unleaded solder. Yes, you can put um, you can put leaded and mix all of that, but you don't need to. This is the cleanest way that I found to do these um, specific swaps. Now, there is a chance that because I pulled this from a donut, this could also be faulty. And this is potentially something that I should have checked before I even took it off the other board. So I'm going to go back into continuity mode now, and I'm just going to check on these caps. No, we don't get a beep. That's good. The beep that you just heard was from this cap because this side is ground, and this side, the rail goes into the chip. But I don't have any beeps. That's really, really good news. And now all we should have to do is change the port and I'll, uh, I'll walk you through that as well. And here we have the charging port for the OLED. I have removed, there's a couple of like covering clamps on both sides, one this side, one the other side. So I've gone ahead and removed that now. So I'm going to go a slightly bigger nozzle now and the temperature has gone up to 450 degrees Celsius. Airflow speed still 50%. I'm just going to come in from underneath here and get this port off. And again, we've got the unleaded on here as factory okay which is uh, are these pins the pins underneath as well and these uh these ground holes what i'm going to do is i'm going to add leaded to the unleaded to bring down the melting temperature so when we put a new port on we've got some nice fresh solder there so i'm rotating underneath you can see that it's just starting to molten you see this ground hole down here look this leg and the other areas are now molten as well so i'm going to just give it a little tap that's ready to come off now so i'm going to come in lift the port up very slowly and gently and there we have the board itself. I rotate it to make my life 10 times easier. I come in with some flux. I put some flux just here over the contact pins and the ground holes. And then I come in with my soldering iron, 450 degrees Celsius. And I just simply drop some leaded onto all the ground holes first, no particular order. And then just go over the pins Oh, we have got a broken pin there. Can you see that broken pin? That should be okay, believe it or not. That might be due to force from previous owner with the port, which is why it kind of looks like how it does. But we should be okay. Oh, maybe it's just dirt. Is it dirt? I can't tell if it's dirt or whether it's actually been ripped off. I think it's been ripped off. Yeah, it has been ripped off. That that should be okay though. I've got a feeling that'll be all right because it's still extended. What I'm going to do when I put this port on is I'm just going to shimmy it back as far as I can to ensure that it hits this pad. The alternative here, you could solder a little tiny wire from here to here just to cover it, but I don't think I'm going to need to do that if I'm honest. And here's our replacement port, which I'm going to tin. The iron's going to go to 350. I just need to straighten out that little tiny pin there. So a tiny bit of flux here. Just go over the pins. Soldering iron down to 350. And the reason I put it at 350 is because there's less of a chance of me actually burning the plastic in the port and making it look like a bit of a rush job. Quick wipe now with the cotton swab. Get rid of the excess flux that we have. And that port is nice and tinned, ready to go on the board. So again, we come back in here with a tiny bit of flux. Tiny bit on ground. Another tiny bit on ground. Bit too much excess there. So I'm going to come in and just dab a little bit away with my cotton swab. Now I can reduce the temperature to about 430 degrees Celsius on my hot air gun just moving it over a little bit there we go get a bit more comfy and now we're going to try and place this port on to the board nice and slowly easy does it joey easy does it make sure we try and get that connection and because i've added the leaded again to the unleaded this is going to lower the melting temperature of the solder less stress on the board there we go nice all heated up i'm going to come in now try and drop that down keep rotating wait for the port to sit go on there we go, it's sat nicely now. So I'm gonna, like I said, try and shimmy this back as much as possible because I wanna try and get a connection underneath. Probably about there. Push down, come off the heat, hold it. Give it a couple seconds, wait for that solder to solidify. There it is. Come off, quick clean and inspect to make sure they're all solid. I've probably done around about five of these before in terms of the uh, OLEDs 
port swaps, but it's the same methodology. Meth methodology. Meth meth. It's the same method that is used on all the others. You know, exactly the same. And look, the solder looks really, really nice on the back as well. I don't need to make any adjustments there at all. And how do the pins look? The pins look nice and flat, flush to the board. Hopefully, that one underneath is going to be okay, and we'll check that by um, testing the charging cable both ways and making sure it works in the docking station, etc. But they all look nice and secure to me m92 t36 has been changed the port has been swapped let's give this a test just to make sure that we're all good first off actually let me check this fuse i think the fuse will be okay i'm just looking for a quick beep that's all i'm looking for right now quick beep yeah beep. fuse is good right let's test it all right majority of things plugged in before i go ahead and fully reassemble just to make sure that we're gonna work so Let's see what happens, shall we? I don't think... Oh, I've actually not put any screws in, which is not good. Uh, nonetheless, have we made ourselves a nice little profit here? I also don't know how much Nintendo Switch OLEDs sell for now that we have the Switch 2, etc. Let's see. Three, two, one. That's good. Something on screen? Yeah, let's go. We're moving closer to the end goal. So we got a 100 milliamp draw, which means that the battery is capital F flat. This is really, really flat. We've got a battery symbol, which means that the screen is supposedly good. Can't talk for touchscreen just yet because I've not been able to test it. But I'm just going to put this back together now, more so that we have the heatsink back on and some other bits and bobs so I can test the Wi-Fi. And, um, and hopefully, that's all she wrote for this console. However, let me just quickly test. If I turn this around, I want to check that we get a charge on the other side as well. Yes, we do. All good? All good. Okay, cool. Um, and again, I'm going to test it in a docking station to make sure we're all good on that side of things as well. So I'll be back with you in a second. Okie diddly okie. Uh, Mario Superstars. I've got a game in now. That seems to be working fine. We're at 100% battery. I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi works and the Joy-Cons work. The only thing that I have to test left is the docking station. Wish me luck. Here we go. Miss your docking station. Plug it in now. I plugged it in. Do we get anything on the screen? Yes. I hate that weight so much. This is a fully working Nintendo Switch OLED. Let's go. Over to Sally Spectacular Spreadsheet to see how much we're going to get for this, roughly. Here we go. Nintendo Switch OLED episode number 51. Uh, £66.47 for the actual unit. Nothing in parts, so no cost there. Estimate sell price. I've had a look and a gander, and I'm going to say £100. Probably about £3.99 for postage as well. Our estimated profit for this one is only... It's quite horrendous, actually. £20.54, nonetheless, a step in the right direction. That's if it sells for £100, by the way. I hope it does. Nothing to update because I'm now going to wait for this to sell. I thought I'd get a little bit more profit for this, but maybe because of the Switch 2, these are now undervalued a little bit because of that. However, we are also up in the run to Christmas now, so maybe some consoles might sell for a little bit more. Today wasn't the last episode, but ultimately, I think it's coming very, very soon. Could even be the next one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And as always, I shall see you in the next one. Also, give me some ideas. Season three, perhaps? Who knows? Ciao for now.